Good afternoon. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use LibreCAD to draw a solution to exercise one of our week 11 exercises, this question here. So before we go to LibreCAD, let's just look at this and analyze the, the, the problem a little bit. So we've got a top view, we've got a front view, and essentially this, this um, support bracket consists of a flat horizontal plate with a little lug that sticks out the bottom and a lump that is sticking out the top and then the corners of that plate are rounded off. And that's kind of how we're gonna, gonna draw it. All right, so let's go to LibreCAD. To start with, in LibreCAD, we currently have an orthogonal grid. We can change this to, using the, the current drawing preferences, we can change the grid to an isometric grid. Now, some people find this very helpful. I'm don't really find it all that helpful, but it depends on how you work. And Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to draw a box that then encloses the support bracket entirely, um, just to give me an isometric box from which I can picture this object and from which I can work to, to, to draw the final object. So, the total length of this object so the total width of this object is 135 millimeters plus this 32 for this side radius and another 32 for that side radius. So that's 135 plus 64. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the, I'm going to make sure I'm drawing on my construction layer. I'm going to use the angle tool and I want to draw a line that is at 30 degrees, isometric line, and it is 135 millimeters plus 64 millimeters. So that's that 135 plus the 32 plus the 32. Um, and in this case, I'm going to snap to the grid at point zero zero here in the center of the picture. All right, that's my first line. Now I want to draw the depth of the object. The depth of this object is this distance from here to here, which is 32 times two. So that is 64 millimeters. So that's an angle of 150 millimeter, uh, 150 degrees at a distance of 64 millimeters. I'm going to turn off snap to the grid because I want to only snap to the endpoints of lines. And I'm going to put in a line there and I'm going to put another one at the end of that line there. And then finally, I want to draw the height of this object. So this object is then 22 millimeters high, 22 millimeters over here for this for this arc, semicircle, plus another 22, that's 44, sorry, 42, plus then that 45, so 42 plus 45 is 87, plus this 34 over there. So now I want a line that is at 90 degrees, and it is 87 plus the 34. Let's just check that, correct. Okay, that gives me a vertical line. And I can put that vertical line on each of these four corners. Then I'm going to use the two-point tool to finish off this box. I'm going to draw a line across there, press escape, and then across all of this top space here. And let me auto-zoom to that, that box. That then is an isometric box that encloses the entire object that I'm going to be trying to draw. It gives me a, a nice picture of where it's going to fit and, and an idea of where I'm going to be going with, with that. All right, so the next thing then I want to draw is I want to draw this horizontal plate. I think that's the sort of main locating feature of, of this object. This horizontal plate is at a distance of 22 plus 20, that's 42 millimeters above the base of my enclosing box. So I want a line that is now 42 millimeters above the base of this enclosing box. Okay. One way that you may be tempted to try and draw that is to use the parallel line tool. This is very useful when we're drawing orthographic views. So if I choose the parallel line tool and I set the distance to 42 millimeters and I draw a line parallel to that baseline at a distance of 42, um, if we just check some of those measurements using the measurements tool, 
distance point to point. If we measure the distance from that end to that end, we'll see that yes, the distance is 42. What that's saying is that those two parallel lines are 42 millimeters apart when measured perpendicular to the two lines. The problem that we have here, if I measure the distance from this point up to the line, vertically in my isometric view, I get a distance of 48.4974 millimeters, which is not what I want. And that's because we're using an isometric view and we're wanting, when, when we talk about a height of 42, we want the distance from the baseline up this vertical to be 42, not the distance from here to that horizontal, that parallel line to be 42. So using the parallel line tools, while it's very useful in orthographic views, it's not very helpful in isometric views. So I'm going to escape out of that tool. I'm going to delete that line. There are a couple of different ways that we can measure that distance. One of the easy ways is to use the circle tool. And I'm going to choose a circle with a center, center where I can select the center and I can set the radius. So if I set the radius to 42 and locate that circle at this bottom corner here, that then gives me a line, a distance that I can use. So now I can use um, Escape, escape out of that tool. That distance from here to here is now the 42 millimeters that I need. Um, so I can then start to draw that base plate. Uh, what was that distance again along here? It was 135 plus 64. So again, I'm going to use the angle tool at a 30 degree angle and 135 plus 64 and I can draw my line here and then we said that the depth was 64 millimeters so I'm going to sorry, go back to here make it 150 and 64 millimeters put that in there and there and then use the two point tool just to finish off that last line there all right, so that's given me then the base of this base plate or this horizontal plate over here. Now I want to do the same again, but I want it for the top, but I want it to be at a distance of 20 millimeters apart. Okay, so we could draw another circle over here with a radius of 20 millimeters. The problem with using the circle tool um, as a measurement tool is that we end up with lots of circles all over our drawing and it gets a, can get a bit confusing. Another way to do that is just to put in a vertical line. I'm going to use the angle tool, set the, the angle to 90 degrees and the length to the 20 millimeters that I want. Okay, and I can put that in there. All right, and then we will, although we can't really see that line because it's, it's, it's a construction line lying directly on top of another longer construction line, it's a bit difficult to see where that line ends. But because we're using the snap tools, we can ensure that the drawing that I want to snap to will snap to that. Now, I could go and draw those lines again like I did for the for the bottom edge of that flat plate. But again, there's a quicker way to do that. I'm going to select that bottom edge, all four pieces, and I'm going to use the Move Copy tool. All right, and then it asks me over here, it says specify the reference point. I want the base to be the reference point. And then it says specify the target point. I'm just going to jump up to this measurement that we've made of 20 millimeters and click on there and I want to keep the original because I want both the base and the top and say OK and escape out of that and now I've got a rectangle showing me the base of that horizontal plate and another rectangle showing me the top of that horizontal plate. OK, um, I could start putting in some some visible lines but I won't just yet because we've still got some more work to do. All right so let's then look at this little lug that we have over here. Okay there's a straight line portion here that is 20 millimeters long and then there's the curve which has a radius of 22 millimeters. Okay so I'm going to be working in this corner here I want to have again the angle tool 90 and 20 millimeters suits me 
but now I want to be going down so I can do one of two things I can either change this to a minus 20 or I can just snap to the end of that line so if as you can see that that line is now a 20 millimeters facing down as opposed to 20 millimeters facing up so I'm gonna snap to to there all right and then I want a line to give me this measurement here which is a radius of 22 times 2 so that's 44 okay the angle is a 30 degree angle but the length is minus 44 and sorry let's just make this snap to the start again so again that line is pointing backwards instead of forwards that will give me the distance that I want of 44 okay and I'm gonna put one over there as well okay all right and then let me put in okay so now what we need to do is we've got a, we've got a circular semicircle over here that I need to draw but now remember when we're drawing an isometric view circles come out as ellipses now fortunately uh, LibreCAD has some useful ellipse tools that will help us to do that but in order to draw an ellipse in, in LibreCAD we need an enclosing box so in this case because we're trying to draw a circle or in, we're going to draw half a circle but we need to draw the full circle first and then we'll break it in half later so because we're going to draw a full circle here we need a square box that has sides of 44 millimeters okay so we've got this line here is this is essentially the center line of the circle we need lines that are half of that 22 millimeters yes it's 22 millimeters going up and down from there so let's do this 22 millimeters and they must be vertical so 90 degrees one going up and one minus 22 going down okay and then let's just be a little bit careful here because remember that this line the distance between this line here and this line there is 20 millimeters but we want to go up to 22 so I want to draw another line in at 30 degrees and 44 in length so I'm going to put a line in there okay. and I can put one it's not necessary to put one there so now what I've got is I've got a box that has 44 millimeters on side on each side so I can escape out of that tool this line this line this line that line and that line define for me a box 44 millimeters on a side that will allow me to draw an ellipse which we can then break in half to give me my semicircle okay so I'm gonna draw this now on the visible layer because this is the final visible line I'm gonna use the ellipse tool and I have a number of different options but the the easiest when we're using um, drawing isometric tool isometric drawings is this ellipse is inscribed tool so it asks me to specify the first line so I'm gonna specify that line it doesn't really matter what order you do them it asks for a second line so I'm gonna use this line and then a third line and then a fourth line over here and once I, when I click it draws for me that full ellipse which is exactly what I want except that it's it's a full circle instead of a half circle so let's escape out of that tool and we can use the divide tool over here to split this ellipse select the ellipse and select the cutting point which is the end of this line here and then I'm going to select the lips again and I'm going to cut it at that point there and then if I s escape out of that and select this top half you see that only half of that ellipse selects which is great it's what I want and I can delete that so here I've got now this ellipse or this half ellipse which represents this half circle when I draw it in isometric view all right let's finish off a couple of things so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit still working on the visible line I can draw I'm going to use the two-point tool just to finish off from here to here and 
from here now notice don't go all the way up because remember that's 22 that was the di the radius of the circle we don't want to go all the way up we want to go up to the base of the horizontal plate which was only 20 millimeters so we're coming up to there okay and let's auto zoom on that and see what we're looking at so far escape out of that tool all right so we've got one corner of the of the horizontal plate we've got that piece of the of the of that lug okay now how thick is this thing it is 20 millimeters thick it's only 20 millimeters thick over there okay so I'm now going to draw another construction line using the angle tool its length must be 20 millimeters and its angle must be 150 millimeters and I'm just going to zoom in to make sure that I select in the right place and I'm going to put that onto that end there. Okay. Um, and that is going to show me where the back of this lug goes in. Let me do this correctly. Hmm. I think I made a mistake here because the distance that I used for the depth of this plate was the 32 times 2 which is 64 but I forgot that 20 millimeters let's just quickly check that what is the depth of this using the measurement tool we can just check from here to here is 64 millimeters okay so this lug in fact needs to stick out forwards and not go backwards so let's change that I don't need that line anymore I'm going to delete that one I'm still going to draw a construction line using the angle tool at 150 but I'm going to use it I'm going to say minus 20 so that it sticks out towards the right hand side instead of going off towards the left okay okay and then what am I going to do with that well I need to draw the front of this this arc over here again I could go and construct a box around it and draw the whole arc but much easier just to select that and the arc um, I think I'm going to select this line even though it's not exactly right it's a bit too long and we can use the move copy tool okay I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to make sure I click on the right places my reference point will be this point and then I'm going to copy it along to the end of that arc over there. I definitely want to keep the original so we can say OK. And let's escape out of that. It seems that I didn't have this vertical line selected. All right, not a problem. We'll quickly draw that in from there to there. OK. And while we're at it, we can go across to there. Not sure if that point will be there. We'll we'll check it when we get a bit later. Okay. Now, escape out of that. All right. So this this is the back of that lug and this is the front of that lug this part is in fact going to be um, behind us so we could turn it into a hidden line later on if we want to okay. all right I'm gonna put in another visible line a 20 millimeter visible line at an angle of 90 degrees like at 20 millimeters and I'm gonna put it over there and another one over here because this line does actually not exist so I'm just gonna delete sorry what did I delete there? delete that line there okay and we can connect these up using the two-point tool Okay. All right, now we've got a couple of things to, to fix here because this line 
from this point, well, in fact, all of the way from here around to here. Okay. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to connect up these two arcs. We need a, a line that is tangent to these two arcs, that one and that one. So, how can we draw a tangent line? Well, again, fortunately, we have a tool for drawing lines. We have two different tangent tools. One draws a tangent between a point and a curve. But in this case, what we need to draw is we need to draw a tangent between two curves. So the second one here that draws a tangent between a curve and a curve will be the right tool for us to use. First thing that we need to do is select the first circle or ellipse. I'm going to select this one. And then select the second circle or ellipse. Okay. Now notice that as you move your cursor... Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Let's try that again. Select that one and then select that one. Okay. Now, anything behind here, from here all the way up this line here is in fact a hidden line. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to divide this arc again at the end point of this line. So let's use the divide tool. I'm going to select this arc to do divide and you see how it's changed green. And then I want to specify the cutting point, which is going to be that point there. Okay. And I can escape out of it. So I want to then change this and this line into a hidden line. So I'm going to change the attribute of those two lines and move them onto the hidden layer. And say so, OK. And now we've got a hidden line up there. Something strange happened here. I think what I've got is I selected the construction line as well as the solid line. All right, not, not too serious at this stage. All right, let's auto zoom and see what the whole thing looks like. So we've now got this part over here. All right, let's then draw this lump that sticks up over here. Okay. This lump, the top curve here, this top semicircle, has a radius of 34 millimeters, and it is a distance of 45 minus 20. So this straight line over here is 25 millimeters long. Okay. And as you said, radius of 34. So let's put that in. And where does it? Where is it located? We don't have a specific dimension telling us where this is located between these two edges. But because this is a center line lining up with the top with this the circle, we know that this thing is in the center. Okay. So that means that it is 32 millimeters plus a half of 135 to the center line over here. So what do we need? Um, we have, I want to know what the distance between this end and this line over here is, that starting point. Okay. So between the center point and here is 34, and between the end and there is 32. Okay, let's look at it another way. This is 135. Um, essentially what we need to do is we need to take 135 divided by 2, and subtract this 34. That will give me the distance from here to here, and then add the one, the, the 32. So what we're saying is it's 32 plus 135 divided by 2 minus 34. Let's see if that gives us something reasonable. I want a line. I'm going to use the angle tool at 30 degrees and its length must be 32 plus 135 divided by 2 minus 34 and that gives me a line that looks like it might be about right okay and I'm going to put that 
there and I'm going to put another one there okay then I'm going to use the two-point tool just to connect those two together sorry I'm drawing on the wrong layer I should be drawing on my construction layer okay let's just zoom in and select that one and that one and put them back on the construction layer like they're supposed to be okay alright so that gives me then this line here okay I need another one over here the distance between that one and that one is 34 times 2 so that's 68 millimeters so let's do this again and we're going to use the angle tool 30 degrees and we want 68 millimeters and we can put that one there and there okay and let's zoom out and let's just do a quick check always good to check on your work okay if this is in the center sorry okay let's do this if this this thing here that is sticking out is in the middle then obviously the distance between here and here must be equal to the distance between here and here let's check that using my measurement tool distance point to point the distance from here to there is 65 and a half millimeters what is the distance between here and this far corner over there turns out it's 65 and a half so we're good to go the distances are the same on both sides okay all right let's just put another line going across here from there to there and that gives me essentially the base of the lump that's sticking out then that lump has a height we said that the distance between the top surface of the flat plate and this uh, and the and the center line of the of the circle and the semicircle is 45 minus 20 so that's 25 millimeters so let's put that in and again using the angle tool I want vertical lines so 90 degrees that are 25 millimeters long okay and I'm gonna put one onto each of the four corners okay and then let's just connect that up using the two-point tool we can go one two three four and back to there okay so that is the part of this lump sticking out before we get to the curvy part okay now let's build some some space for the for this curvy part and the height of that curvy part is the 34 millimeters so again I'm going to use the angle tool but now I want my length to be 34 millimeters okay and I'm going to put that in there and one there and onto each of the four corners and again using the two-point tool just move my drawing around a little bit I'm going to connect those up careful that you connect it up correctly to the and to that one and that one okay and let's just check if we've done it correctly this line should be at 150 degrees so let's just quickly measure the line um so we're going to say angle between two lines don't have a horizontal line we only have a vertical line so from vertical to 150 should be 60, 60 degrees so the angle between this line and that line should be 60 degrees which it is so that's great so my line is correct okay so again we need to draw an a semi r a semi ellipse half an ellipse into this space here okay now remember that this distance from here to here is 34 millimeters but this distance from here to here is only 25 so I'm gonna need to put in the rest of this box at a distance of 34 millimeters from this one okay so I'm going to go again I'm gonna use the angle tool 90 degrees 34 but this time I want it to be minus 34 and I'm gonna take it from here that's gonna give me a line that's minus 34 and then I want one at, at 30 degrees that is 
68 millimeters across the bottom there. Okay. Now, again, I could fill it, finish this off and draw a line over there, but it's not really necessary because when we draw an ellipse, an inscribed ellipse, we just need a line on each of its four sides, which we which we already have. Okay. So on the visible layer, I'm going to draw this ellipse, and I'm going to use the inscribed ellipse, and I want this line. I want this this line over here. I want to make sure that I select the right one, the one that's closer or towards the left, not the one that's towards the right. And then I can come down here and that gives me my ellipse. All right. And again, I actually only need the top half of that, so I'm going to divide that ellipse. Select the ellipse and divide it at that point and select the ellipse and divide it at that point. Escape out of there and select the bottom half and delete that. All right, and then just so that we've got a bit of an idea of what we're doing to help us see it a bit, I'm going to draw in some, some vertical, some visible lines. I'm going to connect that one to the, oops, Control Z that, it jumped to the wrong point. So let's start again. I want to go from the just zoom in a bit to make sure that we're snapping to the right point and then across to there and I want to draw a line from let's move this drawing down a bit from there to there okay this line here in that corner there is in fact the very back bottom corner of the of my enclosing box. Okay, let's auto zoom and see how we're getting on. Okay. All right. I don't want to finish off going in this direction because we've still got to round off this corner and we've still got to round off that corner. We, we'll do that later. Okay. But what I can do is I can copy what I've done now to this back over here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to select this ellipse, that vertical line, and that vertical line, and I'm going to copy it. And I want to copy it from this point to that point, keeping the original. Okay. And now I need to just put in a tangent line again. So I'm going to go land tangent between two curves from that curve. Now, as you move your cursor around, you can see that the, the, the line that it's going to draw jumps around a little bit because it's depending on where the curve goes or might go. Um, so just make sure that, you're, that your line is going in the right place before you click. So there's my line. Okay. And then we need a line between that point and that point because that is a corner. Um, do we need to put a line from here to here? Sorry, escape. Do I need a line from there to there? The answer is no because it is actually a smooth transition. This line joins to the curve at a tangent at that point. So there's no actual corner so we don't need to put a, a line in there. Okay. And again, um, so this is all visible, but over here at the back here, this is hidden. So again, I'm going to divide that curve up again. I'm going to divide up this arc at that point. And then I'm going to select that piece of the curve and this vertical line. Which, okay. And I'm going to change them to be hidden lines. Okay, let's just turn off the construction just to see where we are at the moment. We're making progress. We're not there yet. Okay. Um, there's something funny still going on down here. Let's just sort that out, I think. I've got two different lines. If I press delete, 
Ah, that's better. Yes, I had two pieces of line there that became hidden lines. All right, let's turn construction lines back on again and auto zoom to see where else we what else we need to do. All right, so we've got this lug on the bottom. We've got this lump sticking out. We've got construction lines defining the horizontal plate. We need to round off this corner and we need to round off that corner at the back. Okay, let's work on this first one, this front one first. And this has a radius of 32 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to need to put a line over here that is 32 millimeters away from that one. So I'm going to use the angle tool, 30 degrees, 32 millimeters. Um, and I'm going to snap to that point there. And to that point there. And then I'm going to join that there ends using the two-point tool. But what have I done wrong again? Those are visible lines, they shouldn't be. Okay, they should be construction lines. Okay. Um, can't use that line. Okay. And again, because 32 is the radius, I need another one, another 32 millimeters from there. So I'm just going to copy this line. Leave it as a visible line for now just because it actually makes our lives a little bit easier to see it. So I want to copy that one and the distance I want to copy it is from there to there and I want to keep the original. Okay and now I have a line here and I have a line there. Okay if we zoom in this line this first line here is 32 plus 32 which is 64 from the end of this plate this second line here which is the bottom of where this lug or this lump comes down remember it turned out to be 65.5 so there's a little gap of 1.5 millimeters between these two we just need to be careful which line we use okay and again I want to create an arc sorry an ellipse but let's make sure that this time I'm no, in fact, I want it on the visible layer. So I'm going to create an ellipse, an inscribed ellipse, and it must be between this one and this one, and this line and that line. Okay. All right, now we can split that up using the divide tool. I'm going to divide it at that point and select it and divide it at that point and we can delete that one and in fact now we can delete this line and this line and this line and in fact we can delete that center line as well we're not going to need that all right and it's just on the visible layer let's fill in a couple more lines quickly we can go from that point to that one and from that one to that one Okay, and again, we need the same. This is on the top of the plate. We need the same thing on the base of the plate, but we can just use the copy tool. Okay, so I'm going to select this line, my arc, and that line, and I'm going to copy them. And it's asking for the reference point. Now, we don't normally we would expect the reference to point to be on one of the lines that we're copying, but we actually don't need it to be. In fact, what I want to do is I want to copy this whole, these three lines that I've selected. I want to move them down by the thickness of the plate. So I'm just going to select as my reference point this corner of the plate and as my target point the bottom corner of the plate. And again I want to keep my originals so I say yes and escape out of here and now I have got those two lines. Okay. Let's, let's extend this line until where it joins over here. And to do that we can use the trim tool. I'm going to select this line as my limiting entity and then I'm going to select that line here. And it extends it across to there. And then I want to 
make these lines at the back here hidden lines. Sorry, wait, careful. I first need to put in my tangent line. In this particular case, that tangent line is in fact going to be vertical, but we can still use the tangent tool to do that. And I'm going to select that one, and then that one, and there's my tangent line. Okay. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Anything, these lines here behind this tangent line, they are hidden lines. So let's divide that arc again. Select that arc, divide it at that point. Okay. Then we can select the arc and the line, change the attributes. and make them hidden lines. Okay, and let's auto zoom, see how we're getting on, turn off the construction, and that looks like we're beginning to make some progress there. That's looking quite nice. Okay, all right, let's turn on construction and finish off the back of it. Okay, we need to now put in this curve. Now, everywhere else that we've put in a curve, it's been a half circle, a half circle, a half circle. We'll come back to these full circles, circular holes just now. But this one over here is a quarter circle. Okay. However, we're going to draw it in exactly the same way. We're actually going to draw a full circle centered around that point, and then we will chop it into pieces and delete the bits that we don't want. So let's do that. The radius there is 32 millimeters again. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And just to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to use this visible magenta layer so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay. To start with, I'm going to draw a line from that corner to that corner. Okay. That is, let's check the, dis the length of that line. That is. It is 64 millimeters long, which is correct. The radius of this curve is 32, so the diameter is 64, or the distance from this side to that side is 64. Okay, so basically, I need a box that is 64 millimeters on each side. Okay, so I'm going to put in a new couple more tools, a couple more lines. Sorry, I'm going to use the angle tool at 30, and I want it to be 64 long, but I want it to be going backwards. So I'm going to make it minus 64. Um, so that's right. I'm going to put it on there and put it on there. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to connect those two points up from there. Now, the reason I'm zoomed in is because you've got to be careful again. Remember, there's that little one and a half millimeter gap over here. This magenta line is 64 millimeters, but the distance between the end of the plate and where this lump comes down is 65 and a half. So there's this little gap over here. So you just need to be very careful that you s select the right snap point. So I'm going to snap from there to there. Okay. So that then, uh, zoom out a little bit and escape out of that tool. That then gives me a box that is 64 millimeters on a side. Okay. It's a square, except it looks like a diamond shape because we were drawing it in isometric. Okay. And again, let me do it onto the visible layer and we can draw my ellipse. And I can just select each of these magenta lines and again, be careful you don't snap to this line, but you snap to the one that's a, the, the actual magenta line. And there we have that ellipse. Okay. Now, in this case, I only want this quarter of that ellipse. Okay. Um, just wondering what's the best way to cut that up. We can try this. Okay. I've got the intersection snap tool turned on. So, where this ellipse intersects with this magenta line, we should be able to snap to that and use that as the cutting point of the ellipse. So let's try that. Go divide and I'm going to select this ellipse. You see the whole ellipse has turned green and I'm going to snap to that intersection. And then I'm going to select the ellipse again 
and I'm going to snap to that intersection over there okay. and then I should be able to select this three-quarter ellipse and delete it I don't need that anymore okay. um, just to get it out of the way I'm going to select these four magenta lines and I'm going to make them construction lines like they should have been. So I'm going to change the attributes and make them construction. Okay, and we've got those construction lines. All right, we can fill in a little bit more of the visible lines. We can put in a line from there to there. Okay. Okay, now, from where this ellipse intersects with this 150 degree line over here this little piece that we're seeing there should actually be a hidden line and there should be a hidden line going from there into this corner here okay so first of all I'm just going to draw a hidden line using the two-point tool from there to there okay and I'm just going to zoom in nice and tight on that because I want to split this ellipse at this intersection as well. So I'm going to choose the Divide tool, select the ellipse, and snap to that intersection. And then I can make this line, or this little piece of a line, into a hidden line. And if we zoom out a bit, it looks, if we turn off construction, we can then see that that is then um, a hidden line there. Okay. All right. Now, turn on construction again. Generally, when we're doing isometric views, we don't draw hidden lines. Um, I'm going to put them all in on this drawing because it's always convenient with when you draw them on different layers. You can turn them off if you don't want them, but it's more of it gives you more practice to turn them on to to actually draw them. So, I want to then copy this ellipse and this line here and that line there and copy it down to the base of this um, yeah, of the to the base of the horizontal plate so I'm going to select this one I'm zoom in a little bit and select that piece and then that bit and that bit and I am going to copy them from this corner down to that corner. So we're going to go move copy. I'm going to choose that as my reference and that as my target point there. Keeping the original. Okay. Escape out of there. And then just to make get everything out of the way, I'm going to turn off construction and I'm going to select this thing and this one and make them hidden lines. And I need to just join up from there to there as a hidden line. And I actually don't need th that hidden line in there. So let's. I'm going. Uh, I could draw a line between those two points. I could extend this line to that, or I could extend that line to here. Or in fact, I could delete. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that line. And I'm going to extend this line. I'm going to use the trim tool. I'm going to select that as my limiting entity and then trim this line to there. Okay. And I'm going to need to split that line. So I'm going to need to zoom in here, choose the divide tool, select this tool, this line there, and divide it at that intersection, which then means I can select only this piece and delete that. Okay, and let's auto zoom on there, and that then will let's turn off the hidden lines. That is an isometric view of my object, 
except that I haven't yet put in all of these holes. There are one, two, three, four holes that we still need to put in. But that's the, the final view and if we want to turn on hidden lines that's what that looks like. Okay. Um, I'm going to create a new construction layer. So I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to call it um, construction magenta. I'm going to make it black and white. Oh, sorry, magenta in color. And just for a change, I'm going to use a zero width but continuous line as my construction lines. Okay. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can use this, so I can do some construction work for these four holes. We've got a hole over here, we've got a hole over here, we've got a hole over here to draw, and we've got a hole over there. Let's start with this one, it's probably the easiest. Okay. So I'm going to put in a construction line on my new construction layer, and it's going to go from this end of the ellipse to that end of the ellipse. That is a center line of that outer semicircle. Okay, it's the line that goes from there to there, which is also this the center line of this inner circle. Okay. Um, that's interesting. The only one of these circles that is in fact dimensioned is this diameter 18 pointing to the circle here. I'm going to make the assumption that all four circles have the same size. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to LibreCAD. All right. So I need to draw a box over here that has sides of 18 times 2, which is 36 millimeters. Just trying to think what's the, the quickest and easiest way to do that. Okay. All right. What I'm going to look at here is that this distance from here to there is 32. Okay. And if this is 18 from here, so this is diameter 18. Be careful, Neil. All right. So the radius here is 9 millimeters. So this is 32 from the center point out to the edge. And it's 9 from the center point to the edge of the circle. So 32 minus 9 is 23. The distance from here to here is 23 millimeters. Okay. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that is at 150 degrees and 23 millimeters long. And I'm going to put it, I could put it here or I could put it there. I'm going to put it there. So that gives me something to snap to. All right, now I want a line that is 18 millimeters long. Uh, sorry, 18, at an angle of 30, 18 millimeters long. Okay. And I'm going to let it snap to the middle. So I'm going to get a line there. That is one edge of my box. All right. Then I'm going to want a line that is one f at an angle of 150, also 18 millimeters. But I'm going to let it snap to the start. And I can put it there and there. And then one more, but at an angle of 30. And that gives me the enclosing box for my circle. Okay. I need a visible line. I'm going to put an ellipse into there, an inscribed ellipse. And I can just go one, two, three, and there's my hole. All right. Um, let me copy that. From the top surface down to the bottom surface, keeping the original. Okay. I'm going to change that into a hidden line and then I'm going to put in two um, tangent lines but those must be hidden lines so I'm going to go from that arc to that arc and from there to there and if I turn off this construction layer that's what it looks like 
Now, I need the same thing again, but I need it over there. Right. I could redraw it, but as we've seen, it's often easier just to copy it. Okay, and I'm, the only problem here is I don't all right, have a good place, a target and a reference point. Okay, where this arc comes tangent with this horizontal, this this line over here, that's a point about there. Remember, there was a little piece of the arc over there. Okay, if I copy this whole thing from this point to that point, I should get exactly what I need. So I'm going to select two vertical lines, the hidden line at the bottom, and the visible line at the top, and I'm going to say move copy, and I'm going to select as my reference point from there, and my target point, if we zoom in so that we be careful, going to be there. And we can say, okay, and let's auto zoom on there so we can see the big picture, escape out of that, turn off all the constructions and if we zoom in a little bit we can see that we would only actually see part of that hole because part of it is being covered up by this lump that's sticking up over here so I need to split this up and turn it into hidden lines so let's use the divide tool I'm going to divide up this arc at that intersection and again at that intersection and make that piece a hidden line. Okay. And let's auto zoom and have a look at that. Looking nice, I think. And if we turn off the hiddens, that's what we're seeing. So we can see the top part of the hole and the but only and only part of this hole. We still need a hole over here and a hole over there. All right, let's do those. Let's turn on construction again, and let's do that. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to use the magenta construction magenta lines, and I'm going to draw a hole through here, and we'll go through it pretty much the same process that we did there. I'm going to connect up the end of that arc with the end of that arc. Okay, let's just quickly check. Sorry. This one has, the hole has a diameter of 18, the outer arc has a diameter of 20, sorry, not, the hole has a, has a radius of, of 9, diameter of 18, radius of 9, and this outer curve has a radius of 22, so 22 minus 9 is 13 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to draw an angled line angle of 30 at 13 millimeters and I'm just going to put it there and then I want length of 18 we're going to start with the vertical 90 and I'm going to snap to the middle which gives me that one and then at 30 snapping to the start you can put in that base and that piece and then the last one at 90 again and put in that one all right and then on my visible layer i can draw the uh, the actual inscribed ellipse one two three four and we're done okay then let me copy that so I want to copy that. And I want to copy it from here to the And I can make that a hidden circle. And I can join it up with hidden lines using the, the tangent tool again. Hidden lines from this arc to oops, that arc, and from that arc 
do that arc. Okay. And we've got, we're finished with that, that hole through the, the lug sticking down there. We need one more hole over here. But it turns out that it's the same size as this hole, so I don't need to redraw it. I can just copy this. Okay. I'm going to use a particular tool, a snap to tool, because I want to copy this from the center of this magenta line over here to the center of this line over there. And fortunately, we have a very useful tool that allows me to snap to the middle of a line, which is that snap tool here. So I'm going to select this one, not that one select that arc. I'm going to say move copy and I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that I'm snapping to the right points. I'm going to turn off these other things so we don't snap to the wrong thing by mistake. Okay, From there to there. Keeping the original. Okay. Um, and let's zoom out and I'm going to copy it again from there to the midpoint there. Okay. We can change that into a hidden line. And two more tangent lines and I think we're pretty much done. Okay, let's turn off all the construction work and auto zoom it. And that looks pretty much done to me. And I turn off the hidden lines just to make it look a bit clearer. So that is what we would typically draw. A, um, an isometric view typically doesn't have construction lines and you could print it out looking like that. Or if you wanted the, the hidden lines, sorry, I said, an isometric view typically doesn't have construction lines. I mean, t meant hidden lines. Isometric view typically doesn't have hidden lines, but we've drawn them in just for the practice. Um, we can hide them if we don't want to see them, but we can also see them if we want to. And then that is, let me just quickly look at the, at the question again. I think that we've got everything there. We've got that hole, we've got this hole through there, we've got this hole through there and we've got this hole through the lug, we've got the lug, we've got the lump sticking up, we've got the plate with all its corners rounded off except for this one. So that's it, we're done. Um, turn on everything again so that we can see everything and auto zoom on there and that's the final drawing showing all the lines that we needed to make this drawing. Thank you for watching.